Oh hi from Cottage Country. It's June 1st. Lovely spring day. Gonna tackle some gardening. There's baby. Oh. Just taking a look here at the two-tier bed and what's going on. And it's uh it's kind of confusing. Uh, in the forest we have lots of things that transplant themselves from bird poop and just I, I don't know how these things come to fruition and uh, there's a lot of mixed things going on and it's hard to weed because it's hard to determine sometimes what is a weed so I had this problem last year as well now it looks like I don't know what this mystery flower is it's it's pretty cool looking I have no idea what that is the hydrangea over there is coming back and it looks like the hibiscus has one little sign of life along with these other strange flowers. There's some uh, rutabecchia coming. The trumpet vine is slowly coming to fruition and yeah lots of strange things happening in here like there is something called wild ginger and it it kills me. So here's this but also there's a coneflower leaf. So they look really similar. <laughs> this is also a coneflower. So it's really hard to uh, determine what's what's good and what's not, along with grass. Ugh, so evil. So just kind of taking a little peek here to see what's going on, but there's no blooms here yet, which is uh, kind of rough. Um, here is some of the sages. So they have come back. They are a perennial but they are really small right now. And I planted some corn and some cosmos over there. The hollyhock is doing nothing. It's just a dead stick right now. And the beard tongue is just there. That's kinda, it's kinda doing something. It's kinda doing something. Here in the second tier, we have um, the blazing stars coming back. So that's just over here in the corner. We have some lily leaves coming. So here's the lily leaves. These is um, just like a natural plant. Deer actually eat the berries off this. But somewhere in that mess, there you go. There's some bee balm right there. Hard to tell, but that's bee balm. And coneflower coming back. Bellflowers are, are coming. They also look like weeds, so it's very, very hard to tell. The coral bells is, is here doing its thing. I love the watermelon coral bells. The other coral bells is so tiny. Like it, it's so hard. The Russian sage is super tiny. It's Oh my god. This is a surprise. Move away rubber plant. Looks like we have a glad coming back. Which means nothing because they've broken my heart every year. Oof. It gets rough here in the forest. Also these plants are really cool. Um, this is a rubber plant and it's gotten quite big so a couple of blooms there but other than that it's kind of a weird time where there's not a lot of um, hummingbird food so I'm really relying on the annuals right now I'll take you to the other garden so here we are at the lakeside garden I have some backup bee balm um, I have not planted it yet because I'm waiting to see what's going to happen and you have to be very careful with a perennial garden because like you just you don't know what's an actual plant and what's a weed it's crazy so I have my fuchsias um, this time of the year I'm really relying on them because there's not much going on in the garden like we had some daffodils we had the honeysuckles um, and and now there's really no flowers so it's kind of it's kind of hard um, so in this area here, there's a sage. So that's coming back nicely. Looks like there's some bee balm mixed in there as well. So that's very cool. This one is a, a natural bee balm. Um, it's native, so it's more susceptible to rot and bugs. And then we have a beautiful specimen of poison ivy. <laughs> um, so I gotta be really careful in this bed because there is a ton of poison ivy here and it, it kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Um, there's a the columbine. It's done. It didn't flower, but it's looking really mighty and nice. And then over there, actually, 
kind of hard to see, but there's a little purple flower, um, and that's a tiny dahlia. We have some lilies coming here, uh, more poison ivy. There's some rutabecca that's coming through as, along with this grass. <laughs> so, and then there's some basswood that just randomly kind of pops up. So this is kind of a weed tree. It grows really quickly. It's a softwood. Um, this is also another basswood, which sometimes I have trimmed. Now, uh, there is so much poison ivy in this bed and I've been trying to deal with it for a little while now. Um, but there's not much I can do except for chop it off. Um, I'm gonna mulch this bed as well. So it looks like the crosmina is coming. It does look like grass, so that's very confusing as well as the poker plants, which I still have yet to get a bloom from. I'm really impressed with the raspberry wine bee balm. Look at that. Look at that, it's spread like wildfire. Like this plant is actually doing something for me. Like it is paying off. It has spread through rhizomes very, very nicely. There's nice poison ivy there right beside it. I'm ready, ready to get me. <laughs> so yeah, you gotta be very careful weeding. Um, in cottage country, you just never really know. And then here I have a spot that I have glads planted as another test, because you just don't know. I kind of sprinkled them around the property to try to find a perfect spot. So this spot is meant for that. And if nothing happens here, I'm gonna plant that backup bee balm, um, especially since the purple wine has spread so much. We got one there, one there, one there, one there, one there which would be really nice to fill in when the lilies die. So that'd be really, really cool. And actually over there, so I'm just kind of slowly trying to manage this area here. So I have it kind of wooded off to kill some of the poison ivy, but um, some of the bee balm actually has spread over there. So that's amazing. And you can't even imagine how much poison ivy is there. That's poison ivy, that's poison ivy, that's poison ivy. Um, so I tried to manage it by kind of restarting the soil, covering it with stuff. Um, has definitely cut back on some of the poison ivy, but unfortunately it spreads through rhizomes. So it can pop up anywhere in any bed at any time. Yeah, like look at that wildness over there. I don't attempt that. All right, so here's a nice pleasant surprise. I believe that this is uh, Agastache. So it didn't come back last year, maybe also because I didn't really give it a chance. Um, because again, it, it just looks like a weed. Um, but what I did this time to check is I actually um, smelt it. So it smells like spearmint. So that is definitely my plant. It's a perennial. It is coming back. And I thought it would be an annual. So that's great. So now I have an extra spare uh, to put in the other garden. So again, patience, patience, and uh, being really careful weeding. Like, go figure, right? So I've made the executive decision that I'm going to put some of my additional perennials in pots for now. Um, and then they will be planted later um, when I get more blooms just to see exactly what's going on. So here we have one of my favorites, the Dwarf Hummingbird Mint Agustache. This year I got it in Kudos Mandarin, which is really cool. And this is actually true, so... The hummingbirds love this plant and it blooms into the fall. It is amazing. So the other ones I have are pink. So it's pretty cool that I got um, orange. So that's really, really, really exciting. And I've already had this hummingbird approved. Another one of my absolute favorites is the bee balm. Um, so I just want to make sure that nothing else is gonna come out. So these are staying inside the pot for now until I can determine where I have negative space. So just want to make sure I give everything a fair chance this year. And there's the heron. Beautiful. I hope you're having a good one and I hope your gardening is going well. See you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.